Hey guys, welcome to Mountain Cooking with Missy. Y'all, <laughs> I'm gonna show you how to make old time meat chicken and dumplings the way I was raised on them. I had them like this and these are fluffy dumplings and y'all, they're a family favorite of ours. So I'm gonna show y'all how to make them. So I'm about to get started on the dumplings and um, this broth here that I have in my kettle is probably I don't know, maybe six to eight cups. I don't, I didn't measure. I just cooked uh, about six chicken legs with the skin on in the crock pot overnight. And this is the broth that I have left. So uh, there's a good amount here, probably about six to eight cups of chicken broth. And I got about three cups of self rising flour. I'm using the white lily flour. I'm going to use a third cup of uh, melted lard. And I'm going to use about a cup, maybe to a cup and a half of buttermilk. Buttermilk makes it taste so good. But let's get started. All right, we're gonna get started on the dumplings. Now, um, these are fluffy dumplings. These are gonna be fluffy style dumplings. This is the kind of dumplings that I grew up having. And I talk about, um, I often mention that I'm from the mountains of Southeast Kentucky. Now, let me just say, every different you know different parts of the country especially in the united states people's versions of dumplings are different i know now being where i'm from chicken and dumplings usually meant you had a you had fluffy the dumplings were fluffy and there was no vegetables or anything like that in the dumplings to me that's more like a stew or a soup these dumplings are just plain simple dumplings that's just made from the broth or the gruel we called it gruel off of uh, cooked chicken and it's always best to use chicken with the skin on because you need that good fat and always best to cook chicken with the bone because it gets flavor from that i personally cook my chicken the night before when i know i'm going to make chicken dumplings in the crock pot and that way i cook it on high it gets cooked really good tender falls right off the bone and you get all that good flavor from the bone of the chicken and I just debone my chicken and take the fat off and set it aside. You don't want to have chicken in your grill when you're making your dumplings because it'll stick to the bottom. I learned that from personal experience. This is basically how my mom and my mama made chicken and dumplings. And I just take a well, just kind of like make me out like a little well in the bottom here, in the middle of my flour here. And I'm gonna just start by drizzling a little bit of my buttermilk not all of it at once, probably about a cup, a little over a cup. And I'm gonna go ahead and put my melted lard in here. Now I use lard because if you want that good old timey taste, then lard's gonna, that's where you're gonna get the taste because that's what Mamaw used. And that's what I'm using. And I want it to taste like, if you want it to taste like Mamaw's and Granny's and, Anies and whoever in your life that made chicken and dumplings that you remember most of the time they probably use lard y'all especially in the south but if not you can use melted shortening i am going to add more buttermilk you can use melted shortening or melted butter too or just some vegetable oil. you can just put in a third cup of just regular uh, vegetable oil if you want but i think the lard makes the difference it gives it that old timey taste now this is gonna be pretty stiff, and I am gonna add the rest of my buttermilk. Buttermilk also just gives it that good old timey taste. This is basically how I make cat head biscuits or buttermilk biscuits, y'all. Now some people spoon out their dumplings with a spoon and just drop them in. I don't, and I'm gonna show you how I do it. <laughs> now this will be kind of a thick batter looking uh, of a thing here. <laughs> Scrape the bottom. Okay. Now this is how I like to do it. It will be very thick. I am gonna sprinkle just a little bit of flour on top of this dough. Get me a spoon. Now, it's also important that your, uh, that your broth be to a rolling bowl, okay? A rolling bowl. And let me say before I forget, when I cook my chicken, 
I add two cubes of the Knorr, K-N-O-R-R, -R, two cubes of that in with my chicken whites cooking. Because I love the flavor of the Knorr. I mean, years ago, we used to use them a little hard square <laughs> bouillon cubes. I don't like those because I don't think they have, they are more salt than they are flavor. But I like these, they're kind of soft. And I used two of those in when I cooked my chicken. So give it a little extra flavor. I am gonna put a little bit of black pepper in, in this too. I like plenty of good black pepper. Okay. Now, this is how I do this. I just scrape my spoon off like that. And it's always a mess when you make dumplings, I'll tell you. And I'm gonna flour my hands. And what I do, I scoop up the dumpling with my spoon and put it in my hands. And I just roll it up about this big, like a ball, see? And I'm just gonna drop it down into my broth. And I'm just gonna repeat that until all this is gone. And that flour, you put, keep that flour on your hands. One, you're, they're not, it's not gonna stick to your hands, but also the flour on these dumplings is gonna create your gravy. Drop more, see? And they're about bite size, they're not huge. I mean, you don't, but my, my family prefers the fluffy. Um, I like flat or fluffy, but I think the fluffy, um, my husband likes the fluffy because he says, uh, he likes them because they're kind of dry in the middle. He doesn't like the flat because he says they're chewy. So, but it's everybody's personal preference, but this is how I do it. So I'm just gonna do a few more, show you. I just scooped it out with a spoon, roll it in my hands lightly, just like that. And, dropping them right down in there. So I'm just gonna keep doing that. I'm gonna drop the rest of these in here. And I got a few more tips that I wanna show you when it comes to making dumplings after I got these in here, after I get them in here. Now I got all the dumplings in there. This is the trick I wanna show you all. Uh, never stir, never stir these kinds of dumplings they'll fall apart and you just have a big pot of gravy you want to push go down in between them and push them aside and if you was going if you were going to add a few more dumplings in here which this is full you could add a few more but I'm not you this is how you make room you push them aside you do not stir do not stir them or they'll be ruined they'll be burnt as mommy says They'll be worked, and you want to do that. Now, I, I reduce the heat. They scorch really good, really fast, so you gotta be careful with that. I wanna reduce the heat to about a medium, medium low, and I wanna let these simmer, and I'm gonna cover them up. See the gravy already starting to form? And we'll add a little bit more uh, black pepper to them. Get my heat turned down. Look at there. Now I'm fixing to put my lid on, but I just want to show y'all. Look at the gravy you got. You just want to baste them. I didn't add any salt because those bouillon cubes usually add enough salt. Usually all I add is some pepper. And y'all, though Tommy, the old timers down where I'm from used to put a couple of drops of yellow food coloring in them, make them yellow. So that's the old timey way. So I'm gonna cover them and got them reduced on low and I'm gonna let them simmer for about 10 minutes. So they've been simmering and look how good they look y'all. Now I'm gonna tell you another trick. Now's the time to add your chicken. 
So I just sprinkle my chicken in. Get it all in there. Now what I do with how to get the chicken in there, I just do this. You put your spoon down in there and just move to the side and get your chicken down in there. That way, and don't stir it. That way you get the chicken in. See, just do that. Because you don't want your dumplings to be all tore up. And now they're ready to eat. All right, it's time to eat. Time to eat. I want to put a little bit of black pepper on them, a little bit more. And I'm going to just show y'all. Now, if you all, some people don't want chicken. If you don't want to put chicken in your dumplings, you don't have to. You can leave that out. They're still good like they are. But I just want to show you all what I mean by fluffy dumplings. Look at that. Fluffy in the middle. Dry in the middle like a biscuit. Oh, y'all, my mouth's are water. We'll get me a bite of that gravy and some chicken. Oh, yeah. And y'all, this is just in time for Easter dinner coming up. I don't know. Our family always made big dinner for Easter, just about like Christmas and Thanksgiving. But we'd usually do ham, but we always had chicken and dumplings on the table. Growing up in Tan Yard Holler, where, I'm, uh, where I grew up, we always gathered at my mama's house for all the holidays, Easter included. There would always be a good old kittle of chicken and dumplings on the table. Mmm. Tastes like mamaw's. And so this is a, just in time for Easter. If you've never made chicken dumplings, hey, don't be intimidated by it. Just try it. Try it. Um, try the, the method that I showed you. Y'all, I'm telling you, your family will love them. And I am curious, if you like fluffy or flat dumplings, let me know. I have made some flat ones, and I'll probably be doing a video on some flat ones soon. Uh, an updated one. But around here, we usually eat the fluffy. The fluffy and these are so good, y'all. So I hope you make them. Mm. I just had to get one more bite. Mm, so good. So there you go, y'all. Chicken and dumplings with fluffy dumplings. Mm, and they're so good. I hope y'all make them. If you do, you let me know. Anytime you make anything or you share it on your page, uh, just tag me. Do the at sign on Mountain Cooking with Missy. I appreciate that. And I always appreciate y'all sharing everything and sharing the videos and all the posts. I really appreciate that. And y'all, this, I'm telling you, these dumplings, are the best just tastes like home to me that's the ultimate comfort food right there so thank you all for watching mountain cooking with missy where it's nothing fancy just good eating